This is Dr. Gary O'Brien. In this video, we will be placing four Legacy 3 implants in the posterior mandible. The initial incision should be made with firm, definite pressure and a continuous line on the crest of the ridge bisecting the attached mucosa. A releasing incision is made one tooth anterior to the mental foramen to avoid damaging the nerve. All incisions are made through the periosteum scoring the bone. Firm pressure with the periosteal elevator against the bone, carefully dissecting the periosteum, will avoid damaging the nerve and its contents as the nerve and its sheath becomes continuous with the periosteum. A deep releasing incision lateral to the initial incision will help prevent tearing the tissue while full thickness reflection is completed. Careful dissection of the periosteum in the vicinity of the mental foramen will prevent damage to the nerve. Each osteotomy is initiated with a pilot drill. Orienting yourself with the pilot drill in terms of the position of the lingual concavity will prevent perforation of the lingual concavity during pilot hole preparation. At 600 RPMs, we are very careful to stop the pilot drill at 13 millimeters in osteotomy number one. Osteotomies number two, three, and four will be stopped at eight millimeters in length. While preparing each osteotomy, make a mental note of how dense the bone is in terms of resistance and speed necessary to prepare. Next, the 2.8-2.3 mm step-down drill is used to prepare each osteotomy to its respective length and diameter. Stopping at the 13 mm line, as you see here, prevents damage of the mental foramen. Each osteotomy is prepared to its respective length. Tactile sensitivity and speed of the drill allows you to efficiently prepare the osteotomy without overheating the bone. The final sizing of the osteotomy is completed with 3.4 2.8 step-down drill. Using tactile sensitivity, you can control pressure and speed of the drill to avoid damaging the bone during this final phase of osteotomy preparation. The implants are provided in sterile packaging, which allows you to select the implant by its length and diameter as well as the surface coatings. Tearaway labels for the patient's charts are available on the side of the vial. The vial is opened and its sterile contents are dropped onto a sterile tray. The implants are suspended in their sterile vials with the unique transfer abutment system. The implant is then transferred to the osteotomy using either mechanical or hand pressure to start. The implants are then seated completely with either ratcheting, as you see in this video, or with slow speed handpiece. 
The transfer abutment is then removed with a 1.25 mm hex driver. The internal hex of the implant is then sealed with a low profile cover screw. The Legacy 3 8mm implants are then transferred to their respective osteotomies. The internal hex of the implant is then irrigated with chlorhexidine to prevent post-surgical fistulation. The transfer abutment is color-coded for identification. There is a universal square that allows you to transfer with either the hex driver as seen in this video or with a slow-speed handpiece. Torque resistance should increase to final seating to assure initial stabilization during fixture placement. The transfer abutment should be placed in hydrogen peroxide and then back into the vial that the implant came in, in the event that you choose to use this abutment for restorative purpose. The tapered design of the Legacy 3 implant allows for initial stabilization while transferring the implant to the osteotomy. Implants 2, 3, and 4 are placed 1 mm above the crest of the ridge to avoid endangering the mandibular nerve. Prior to closure, each implant is evaluated for proper positioning. Alterations in implant position can be made at this time. Primary closure is achieved using 4O polypropylene suture material as seen in the video. The flaps are then stabilized using one interrupted suture just distal to the adjacent tooth. A second interrupted suture is used to approximate the papilla.
Careful attention is taken at this point to assure good attachment of tissue around the adjacent implants. Final primary closure is achieved by using a modified uninterrupted mattress suturing technique. The uninterrupted mattress suture is continued to the releasing incision. Once the uninterrupted mattress suture is completed, interrupted sutures will be placed intermittently along the incision line to assure primary closure during the healing phase. After the final suture is placed, the area will be cleaned and evaluated for good primary closure. This video is part of an educational series developed to help doctors in treatment planning and diagnosis, surgical placement, and restoration of dental implants.